Good day, Squire. How have you been? If you didn't already know, the update with the new sigil system actually came out for Windows players yesterday, uh, which, you know, they just decided to bring it into the game a little bit earlier than they originally planned, which I was happy about. But we will be taking a look at that in a second. But first of all, I wanted to go through the weekly event schedule because we have a brand new dragon coming out with this. Of course, we've got the new Dragon Master Pass coming on June the 15th as well. So that is, uh, that's going to be a lot to get our heads around. But you can see with the upcoming event schedule, this is the general gist. We have the Moose Dragon in the bottomless dungeon, clan events. We have a Blitz Breeding for the Aquarius. We have a Dragon's Delight event. And the Dragon's Delight event is going to be the event where you can get this brand new pretty little pink sweet dragon. And then we've got the Dragon Master Pass and a Golden Opportunity event. So the sweet dragon to the probably good news of many is the Milestone Reward Dragon. Assuming it's not the highest Milestone Reward. And the leaderboard prize being the Vibrant Dragon. Which means we should be able to actually get this new dragon. And the Blitz Breeding is going to be Race Against the Clock and use the Armored Dragon and Mercury Dragon to breed the legendary Aquarius. So Armored plus Mercury, two dragons that most people have, should be pretty good. Then in the Bottomless Dungeon, along with the Moose Dragon, we might have Relics of Farming, Extra Dem Relics, and the Zombie Dragon. So that is a general gist of what you should be expecting. And we also have the Jade Warrior Dragon coming as the Dragon of the Week, which you can breed by pairing the Geiger, 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 and Cloud Dragons together. So that should keep you updated with what to expect to come next week. So here is the Sigil update on Windows. Again, we've been through all of this, well, not yesterday, now the day before, so we don't really need to take a look at all of that. We do have weekend events. We've also got the Whale Mart. But the Whale Mart this week will not be giving us special sigils that's going to be for the week after. So uh, we're not going to get any super special sigil stuff for another week yet. So um, I hope that the sigil stuff that we get isn't um, all gem deals because that would suck. Please have it be something in-game. Let me introduce you to sigils. Grab your first free sigil chest. Again, it's the same as it was on Android. The only difference really being that um, we might get different sigils because of the ones that we get out of the chest this time. So equipping sigils, this actually might be more important on our main account here, so I'm actually going to consider this before we do it. Um, area damage skills being cast by our Autumn Dragon probably isn't that good, but positive effects on this dragon being 62% stronger, that's probably could be quite good for our Autumn Dragon if it's getting buffed. So I'm gonna, oh, I'm tired. I'm gonna pop on probably the acceptance one because Havoc and Rebirth, maybe we'll have more use out of them with different dragons. But I'm just gonna equip that one for now. Your Autumn has a new combat power. And at the time of this, we couldn't actually take on the campaign map, unfortunately. So I'm hoping that that starts working from tomorrow. There's a key and that's all I wanted to tell you. Thank you, Aya. So then we'll open it up, and then we got a Witchcraft, Evasion, and another Witchcraft. So those are the main ones that I got last time as well. Maybe it's a default that you have to get a certain amount of the power ones, but Evasion has been pretty good. Witchcraft, all negative effects cast by the dragon being stronger. That seems pretty good on an Autumn Dragon, which is all about, you know, casting Shadow and Plant. Assuming that those are actually the things that are boosted, which I believe they are. I would hope they are, otherwise I'm going to look like an idiot. Um, But now it's deciding which ones of these go on to the rest of the team. So Common Sigil, I'm going to pop on the Rebirth and the Avoidance ones here. Because Nesha's main goal is to just buff other dragons and stay alive. So if we can sit there and sort of allow Nezha to survive for as long as possible, that's going to be the best thing. And then Havoc's not really any good on our Hermes dragon. So I'm just going to give him the Witchcraft one, and then perhaps we'll put the area damage one on to Sany. Because it sucks not having two sigils on a dragon, but considering... If you want to change it, you have to spend, I don't know, the little orby things. It's probably a better idea to just not equip a dragon with them, if they're not very good. Like, VIP tickets for scrolls? Yes, please. 
Dragon Peas tickets. Yes, please. You see, those were two pretty good deals in the Walmart, but the rest are just gem deals, so I don't care about them. But, yeah, I guess we'll go and equip the other sigil to our Hermes, not our Hermes dragon, to our Lantern dragon. Um, because, yeah, Raid, he is not fully upgraded yet, so there's no point to us equipping it onto a Raid, is there? I mean, it will be pretty good on Raid as well, when he actually gets fully upgraded, but for now, we are just going to equip this Havoc sigil. Go ahead, bamboozle him. And now, we should be able to get the power bonus when we go into fights. Open a sigil chest, have six sigils equipped. Wonderful. So, we've got the quests which are win one sigil campaign and win one battle with growth synergy active and create one sigil of uncommon or higher through fusion. Which, I think we need a few for that. So, I'm not going to worry about it too, too much at the moment. But, you see, if we've got Saini here, we don't get the sigil synergy boost whereas if we pop in a hermes dragon not a hermes dragon sorry a nezha dragon with um hermes then we do actually get the boost so there we go four out of four we get the synergy of power which is the one where we just do damage to the en enemy every every round every attack obviously we were going to one shot that guy anyway but I just wanted to take a look at it, get the quest done. And now it's forcing us to look at the weekend events. Fine, fine, I'll do your stinky weekend events if you want me to. I mean, there's no reason not to. It's basically just free gems, which, you know, why not go for free gems? And you may notice that I've got two breeding, or two, both the hatcheries going with light dragons. That is because... I am going to be going for the Tiki Dragon, because since we are now, unfortunately, in the realm of VIP 20... Is that the Tiki? Is that Tiki? I don't know. I'm not even going to check. Um, either way, that's what I've been trying to breed for. But we do also have that new uncommon breedable dragon, which I'm going to be going for him, because he is super cute. Bree breeze Rock, Breeze Block... I'm going to keep calling him Breeze Block after the song. I just can't get it out of my brain. Uh, everyone's saying happy birthday. Thank you. Thank you. That was yesterday now. Um, that was on the day at the time of this recording. So, makes sense. So, then we have the daily tasks. So, there's ten of these a day. And you need to get up to eight of them complete to at least get the gems. You need six of them to get the season points. But luckily, getting the pieces for the dragon is super, super easy because you only have to do four of them. I'm really surprised that they actually made these daily tasks quite nice to the players. Should I really be saying that? It's like, wow, I'm impressed. You've, you've made this not feel like ass. <laughs> ah. Don't mind me, I'm just having a drink of Fanta. Wait, we can get multiple pieces for those dragons at once? I didn't know that. You see that? We just got three pieces for that bog dragon. Hmm, interesting. I don't remember them saying that in the, uh, in the update notes. Oh, either way. So then, you know, there's so many different tabs everywhere. Things have moved around. It's like getting to the friends feature, getting to the clans. I now don't know where any anything is. It's freaking me out. And actually, I just collected all my gold, didn't I? Pants. Um, let's go back, refresh. I guess we'll go and pet our dragons instead. Because one of those daily tasks was complete a clan quest. And really, you should be doing your clan quests every day anyway. Even if you don't do much in your clan, really, because they do give you the clan points. You can get up to a thousand of them every day. And that means that eventually, when you want to start opening packs, you're going to have tons and tons of points to use. Maybe you'll get one of the cool uh, limited time dragons. So it's worth doing them anyway. So the daily tasks, forcing it's pretty good. There's some season points. 40 season points isn't bad. Considering for an entire season, we're expected to get up to, what is it, 8,800? 40 a day just from the daily tasks isn't too bad, because then we'll also get points for breeding and hatching. Wait, what the heck? One of these is not like the other. 
<laughs> They're actually making me bully this poor level 7 player. Seriously. I mean, okay, if that's what you want me to do, game, but I feel kind of bad about it. Um, well, rest in peace, poor Marillo. Um, I'll take it, though. I'll take it. The main issue I've had with this update so far, because, you know, I don't like the sigils anyway. The fact that this sort of thing isn't working either at the moment, like the Enchantment League doesn't work, the, the campaign map isn't working yet. I hope that gets fixed soon or is already fixed, I haven't checked yet. But the main thing I don't like about this update is the fact that they decided to implement it during the dungeon week, which is the dungeon week where we needed the, um, the, the dungeon dragon to compete in the blitz breeding for new dragons. Why did they do it this week? Why did they not do it last week? Why did they not do it the week before? Why did it have to be this week? Or maybe the week after this one, when people are used to things. Because now, it seems like people are struggling, like, way, 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 way more than they were before in the dungeon. And not only that, because of the way that the sigils work, it's now like 50 times more sluggish and slow getting through these fights. I say that as I'm one-shotting everything, but that is purely because I've already gone quite a few rounds in the dungeon here. But with these sigils upgrading everything, the enemy dragons just have so much more HP. My only hope would be that the enemies never go above common sigils in the dungeon, otherwise the bonus to the HP just gets ridiculous. I don't know if any of you have seen some of the legendary bonuses, but I believe that legendary of anything gives a bonus like 2000 HP, something like that, and uh... I don't know how it's possible to actually beat a dragon with so much more HP than what we had before. It's literally not possible. So if anyone manages to like buy some sigil deals or bundles just so that they can upgrade their sigils through fusion, I don't understand how people with common sigils will ever win. And I guess that is the main issue. You could say, well, that's like enchantment though, Quacks, because when enchantment stars and that came out, you had to have your dragons enchanted, and anyone that had more enchantment stars than you was just a higher level. That's true. You're not wrong. Which it did force everyone to start doing enchantment. But the difference this time is that the bonus that people are gaining isn't like a couple of levels per enchantment star, it's like... 50 levels. <laughs> it's like 50 levels of HP. Um, or at least that's what it feels like. Look, I haven't looked at the hard stats of it all yet, but it's scary. It's very scary seeing all these ancients and divines, and it just feels like they are just gonna rule the world at the moment. I guess we'll take solace in the fact that ancient is currently very broken. Um, what I mean by that is it's taking the negative effects from enemy dragons um, along with the positive, which is not how it's supposed to work. I mean, it would make sense though, right? Imagine if you had a drink that was infected, but this drink was, say, I don't know, G Fuel or Monster. Let's say Monster, because say you want to have that boost for the night, so you don't want to fall asleep, you want to be hyper. So you have this drink, it's got Monster in it, but the drink also has some weird other substance, I don't know, maybe it's got a sleeping pill in it as well that you weren't aware of. By the way, never do that. Never have a sleeping pill with Monster. In which case, you'd drink the drink and then it would have the effect of both making you very awake, but it would also take the sleeping pill effect, so you might just fall asleep instantly. Like, it makes sense that with Ancient, if it was going to zuck the power out of something, that that's how it would work. But it was only meant to take the positive. So... I don't know. I guess they just sort of... Um... Let's say screwed it up a little bit, but you know, that's expected with bugs. I mean, should we be expecting so many bugs? Probably not. Because, you know, I'm happy that the update actually came out early because it helps out a ton. 
multiple players that are trying to understand what's happening and them continuously bringing out the updates on time for the Android and iOS platforms but not for PC, it does, it just feels sucky after a while. You see it with other games as well where they'll bring out an update and console constantly has to wait and sometimes that is out of the control of the actual game devs. Sometimes it isn't and it's just the fact that they haven't finished off one of the ports in time. But it depends on the team. I don't know exactly what the case is this time. But we've got the update now. We should be able to start doing new fun stuff soon. And we've got the stuff for next week to be doing as well. <sighs> but you know one thing that I've noticed with this dungeon now with all the way that all the sigils are is it feels like it's basically just build up your dragon fury meter because most of the time you can't actually defeat any dragons because it's like two sets of dragons that just cannot deal any damage to each other in some of the later rounds so it's just sort of you have to survive while building up your dragon fury build the dragon fury and then attack and that's pretty much what you rely on to keep defeating these dragons Obviously the secondary effects are going to be pretty good as well because we've got Witchcraft on Andy so when his secondary effect or his second tick of damage goes off it's going to do quite a lot but you know since I'm still not 100% familiar with all of these sigils just by looking at their symbols it's going to take a little bit of time to get used to them and you never know on the sigil campaign map I might just like go and attack something and then suddenly I die. I'm like, what the heck happened? It's probably because I haven't checked what one of the sigils does, but just like with the elements and everything else, I'm sure within probably not even that long we'll understand what all the sigils do just by looking at them. It's like looking at my own sigils, I know what each of them does already, but it's seeing them on the enemy dragons and knowing what they do, which is the the confusing part at the moment. But that's normal. Speaking of which, these enemies don't actually have any sigils active from what I can see. Have they just had their levels massively upgraded? Oh, there you go. The raptor has it. Interesting. It's like, how do they decide which ones have sigils and which ones don't? Weird. Because surely the ones that have sigils, like, say if they start using uncommon sigils. Surely they'd just be super, super, super overpowered compared. I don't know. I really need to sneeze. Okay, I went and sneezed and, um, yeah, I skipped a little bit of this dungeon because it is just so slow. It's just grind and grind for Dragon Fury. And it's sending me insane. So, um, Again, you can see against uh, this wave of enemies, for example, it just feels like we're not doing any damage and they just sort of decimate us with like a couple of attacks, which is to be expected in the later rounds of the dungeon, but you know, people that before were doing say 30 to 45 rounds in the dungeon, at the beginning of this week, or this new update, have only been doing like 20, which is quite a considerable difference, but I hope that we get our heads around it. And of course no algae. We're not going to be able to breed for that Skyhorn this week as expected. You know what, I'm going to take two days worth of VIP. A hundred dungeon tokens is pretty damn good, but two days of VIP is also pretty good for free as well. So was all of that grinding worth it? Probably not, but I guess we do get some season points for that. We've also got the other quest to do which we can't do yet because the enchantment league isn't open. I'm going to assume... No, still closed. Okay then, well it is what it is. I would say probably look out for any new bundles because with new updates sometimes they bring out new dragons. So I would be interested to see if they actually do that. But can we not see the dragon collector point milestone from the leaderboard here? No, do we just see the point count between global and friends now? Um, where is it? It's on the page some here we go yeah you can see your dcp at any time now or drag collector milestones i guess because now all the elements are unlocked through dragon collector points which means that now you actually have to focus on 
breeding lots of different dragons to be able to unlock stuff, so you can't just power level using XP anymore. So actually, being a higher level doesn't mean anything in DML these days. Which is very, very strange. It's weird to think that after this many years, they've changed it from a normal leveling system to one where you have to just breed a load of stuff. Very weird, I did not expect it. But anyway, um, I am looking for a new dragon here. Where is he? Where, where, where is he? I don't know where he is. Um, Breeze, Breezer, where are you? There he is. Oh, I love him. I love the wide tail. That's what's doing it for me. He's just so adorable. So this is a new breedable uncommon dragon. So you don't have to do anything fancy. It's literally just wind and earth. Because possible results, you can get a dust dragon or you can possibly get him. Um, is that him? I don't remember the time, it's probably not, um, but I'll be excited to get him soon. But that is probably... But that is going to do me for today, so I wish you the best of luck with all of your braiding, and make sure you keep checking the wiki, because you can see that all the sigils have been up updated on the wiki now. If you're confused about sigils, I'm sure there's going to be a full page about them with all the, you know, you can just read it all there at any time. You can do it in game as well, which is pretty good. But, you know, seeing all the sigils, these are obviously the epics and then legendaries. God help us all. God help us all. Anyway, for now, thank you for joining me. Until next time, I will see you then.